Danbury had powerhouse basketball teams in the 1950s, the mid-1950s, under coach Tony Lupian. And they took on all comers. The University of Massachusetts in Connecticut, Boston University, Brown, Harvard, Dartmouth. Two games a year with St. Michael's and the University of Vermont. Obviously a very difficult schedule. In his three years against those opponents, Tom Hart's team won 40 games and lost 23. Middlebury's players on the greatest of those teams included at forward the incomparable Sonny Dennis, inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. Smooth Charlie Sykes, another 1,000-point scorer at the other forward. And in the backcourt, Zip Raza, still playing at age 80. And the wonderfully named John Hoops, Johnny Hoops. These are like names out of a sports novel. But the team was great because it had heart. It had Tom Hart in the middle, the nation's leading rebounder then and for all time. If I could travel back in time, right at the top of my list of games to see would be the two Middlebury UVM games in successive years. The first one, a one-point win, 75-74 in 1953. Sonny Dennis made two foul shots with nine seconds to play, his 32nd and 33rd points. And freshman Tom Hart had 18 points in that game and 30 rebounds. A year later, in perhaps the greatest game ever by a Middlebury basketball player, Middlebury again defeated Vermont, this time 76 to 69. Tom Hart scored 36 points and had 39 rebounds. Keep in mind that as celebrated as he was for his rebounding, he also scored 1,000 points in his three years, averaging 18 and 16 points a game in his last two seasons. Do read the citation in tonight's program for a fuller sense of Tom's remarkable numbers. As hard as it may be to believe, Tom's talents and accomplishments in track and field were just as astonishing as they were in basketball. In his junior and senior years, he usually entered five events in track meets and often won them all. The 100 and 220 yard dashes, the pole vault, the high jump, and the long jump. I was talking to Todd, his son, and I said, he could have also competed in the hurdles, but we had Charlie, his teammate in basketball, Charlie Sykes, was a hurdler. And he also threw the javelin in some meets. His high jump school record stood for 50 years. His long jump record for 30 years. His pole vault record was only surpassed when the fiberglass pole was introduced. He ran a 10 200 yard dash. I like to imagine this six foot four inch, 200 pound athlete competing against those dash men. It would have been fun to watch, wouldn't it? I asked Middlebury track coach Martin Beatty how Tom might fare these days, some 60 years later. He wrote this, quote, he would probably score in the NESCAC championship meet in all of his events and would carry the Middlebury team with many points. Depending on the year, he could possibly be the NESCAC champion in the 200 meters and high jump. I, still quoting Martin, I feel comfortable in saying that with Tom Hart's performances in his many varied events, he could be called the greatest all-round athlete in Middlebury history, end quote. Imagine what Tom Hart might have done with today's facilities and training methods. What a thrill it is for me to present the amazing Tom Hart tonight and to pass the ball now to his son, Todd, who is indeed his father's son. Todd is also in the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame at Ithaca College where he is the leading scorer in the history of basketball there. Todd. Thank you, Carl and Aaron, and a great thanks to the Middlebury College Hall of Fame Committee for your warm reception, and for our family, to these idyllic grounds of my father's alma mater, Middlebury College. Congratulations to all the other inductees on the recognitions of their success. Very impressive, amazing people, and I wish you all the best. 
My name is Tom Hart, Jr. Uh, Todd Hart is a nickname, so I'll put that away for, for, for tonight. I know my father's here, and he'll appreciate the fact that I'm going by his name. My family and I are here to pr proudly witness the Hall of Fame induction on behalf of my father, Tom Hart, Sr., class of 1956, who passed away this past August. <clears throat> My dad was aware of this honor prior to his leading us and was very moved by your gesture and recognition of his athletic achievements. Although he excelled in track and field events and was clearly very successful, and, and we honestly didn't realize how successful he was until we kind of got here tonight and looked at the board, the electronic board, and was just amazed that somebody who could jump that high into a sawdust pit and get up and do it again and over again. I just boggled the mind, but uh, clearly he was very successful in the track and field events, but he never spoke about it, really. Um, a lot of his attention was, uh, you know, uh, due to his basketball successes, and it brought him the most pleasure and success and uh, notoriety throughout his life. Um, he was a very humble man, um, and he spoke, <clears throat> he rarely spoke about uh, his accomplishments unless prompted by my mother's standard introduction of him wherever they went. Hi, this is my husband, Tom. He played in the NBA. <clears throat> As I had thought about my father in preparation for this day, I came to understand much more deeply that he became the man he was, primarily because of his experiences here in this small town in central Vermont. In times of reflection, he spoke about those he shared the years with here. And as I took a closer look, what came into focus was truly that this was a screenplay for the movie Hoosiers. From the high top Chuck Taylors to the baggy white socks, right down to the short shorts with belts. The theme was remarkably similar. A group of guys from a small college who had a love of the game of basketball and each other. From the great scorer, Sonny Dennis, to my father, the hardworking rebounder, and with a squad rounded out by key contributors, Johnny Hoops, can't make it up, Cy Anfinson, Zip Browza, and Charlie Sykes, all brought together by their highly revered, demanding, and irascible former first baseman, Tony Lupian coach, it's art imitating life. It was the shared experiences of those associated with this basketball program and many others that gave my father a rock solid foundation for a successful life. In those formative years, the guidance of the strong-willed, demanding coach helped build the character that made my father the successful man he was. Recently, I wondered, what if Tony Lupian hadn't given my father the guidance and pushed him as far and as hard as he had? What if he gave up on him and he decided he wasn't worth the effort? The life story might be completely different. No NBA, no resume builder, no door opener, just another tall guy. So I want to thank Middlebury College for giving my father the teacher that allowed him to fulfill his potential, not just as a basketball player, but as a whole person. His successes on the basketball court and on the track spawned two more generations who not only knew, grew to love and enjoy competing in the game of basketball, but have grown into successful, hardworking, lovely human beings. And if you don't mind, there's a couple stories that were passed down to me uh, that were written by his teammates, uh, Charlie Sykes and Zip Rouza, uh, in the class of 1957, um, uh, my father and his coach, and uh, some of the experience that they had. <clears throat> there were plenty of lighter moments with Tony Lupi, Lupi, and he wore a dark suit, white shirt, subdued tie at games. He rose to his feet with frequency, urging the charges to hustle and play smart sighing with resignation as those occasions when we didn't. At Porter Fieldhouse in a game one night, Tom Hart, class of 1956, prompted Tony to leap from the bench in incipient agony. Hart was a star player along with the great Sonny Dennis, a legendary three-port sports star at Middlebury. One sports writer likened Tom's rebounding ability to that of the porpoise in marine land who rose vertically from the water with power and grace to snap the fish held high by its trainer. Tom's long arms did not quite scrape the ground, but his leaping ability was a sight to behold and admire. Lupian wanted Tom to operate around the hoop and grab caroms and make layups. He did not want Tom 
ranging away from the basket to take risky jump shots, which I take it uh, he wasn't very good at the jump shot, which he always told me he was, but you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> This night at our home court, Tom hauled in an offensive rebound and spun away from the basket, dribbling toward the foul line, apparently to position himself for a jumper. Tony on his feet assumed a familiar stance, torso bent forward, arms outstretched, palms up in genuine supplication to whatever gods of basketball might help. In a distinctive baritone that carried across the court in the stands opposite our bench, he began loudly and with powerful rhythmic cadence, no, Tom, no, 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 Tom, don't do it, Tom. Tom either didn't hear him or didn't want to hear him, for he worked his way beyond the key, wheeled toward the basket, elevated and lofted a basketball in a high spinning arc toward the basket. Tony was aghast. As the bench, we cringed, but the, fall, the ball fell true, nothing but net. Jerry Gross up high in the rafters of the Fieldhouse broadcasting the game on the campus radio station loudly declared, it's good, what a shot! The fans applauded, but not Tony. He turned toward the bench. I don't care if he made that shot, he said adamantly. It was the wrong thing to do. It was a bad shot. He should have never taken that shot. We held back chuckles as Tony sat down and the game continued. Tom Hart also had a unique sense of humor. I guess they used to use limos to get to the games back in those days. Uh, <clears throat> when one of the limos was inoperative or we needed an extra vehicle, he drove the, to the games in his 1949 four-door bright blue Mercury. So the sto story goes, Tom enjoyed smacking snowbanks along the road for the fun of it. The authors of this article cannot attest to the veracity of this inclination. Anyway, Tom would select a stretch of highway that allowed him to draw alongside one of the limos. Then he slipped his lengthy, broad-shouldered frame down beneath the steering wheel so that it appeared no one was in the driver's seat. <laughs> the player in the passenger seat up front of the, steering the car, hand on the six o'clock position of the wheel. There were priceless, startled expressions of the riders in the limo. We don't recall what Tony's reaction was to this gesture, probably an annoying shake of the head. <clears throat> My dad left his mark here 60 years ago. Throughout his life, people naturally gravitated towards him. He and my mother, Agnes, raised four wonderful, loving people. My son, I think, said it best through streaming tears when told of his passing. He was my hero. Thank you. Good night.